I'm about to take you on a journey to see some of the best competitive robots in the world. I'm Brogan Pratt, and this year, we're at the World Championships of the First Tech Challenge with the Flying Dutchman team. One, two, three, Dutchman! I coach the Flying Dutchman at Competitive Robotics for the First Tech Challenge for FTC. In FTC, students have 12 weeks to build the best robot they can to solve the year's game challenges before competing against 9,000 teams worldwide. And we made it to the World Championships. Very privileged to be here. Uh, we're excited for the opportunity that we have. Last year, we hit rock bottom. Our robots failed spectacularly, but we didn't let that defeat us. We came back stronger this season with a fire in our hearts. We dominated our region this season, being the top place robot yeah! and judged award team. The students came back with a real bang. And after months of regional contests, intense planning, and countless hours of tinkering and modifying robots in the workshop, we're here at the World Championship. It's crazy big. It's, it's amazing. If you don't know what FTC is, it's a worldwide robotics challenge for high school students. Student teams design, build, and program robots to compete in alliance format against other teams. It builds on their teamwork and engineering skills, encouraging students to develop STEM skills and connect with industry mentors. The game changes every year, so I'll break it down for you quick. The game is played on a 3x3 meter field with two alliances with two robots on each red and blue alliance, respectively. Robots had to go into the center structure to collect plastic rectangular prisms and place them in the respective baskets on the corners of the field for eight points. Or they could bring a sample to a human. This human adds a special clip to the plastic piece, and then that allows the robot to hang this piece from the center bar for 10 points. In the last stages of the match, the end game, robots can hang from the bottom rung for 15 points or grab the bottom bar, lift themselves up off the ground, and then grab the top bar and lift themselves up for 30 points. There are more complexities to the game, but that's a rough idea. We started the journey of worlds in our home of the Netherlands. Bringing all the parts you need for competition isn't easy, and we loaded everything up into a bunch of different suitcases. And while I thought that most of the tools had made it into their check luggage, somehow a hand drill had made it into carry out. And surprisingly, bringing this to security wasn't actually a problem. This year, the World Championships is at Houston, and we spent the first day traveling out to our hotel. Day one done, day two kicks off the NASA Space Center. How are we feeling? Uh, pretty good, hyped, tired, but excited for Worlds. We had some extra time before the competition started, and with so many of our parents working for the European Space Agency, it was a no-brainer to take a look. Standing beneath a Falcon rocket at NASA, it's impossible not to feel the weight of that possibility. And after NASA, we headed up over to set up our pit. Your pit is a place to showcase your robot to other teams and to hang up between matters. The cool thing about FTC is it isn't just about robots, it's about building a STEM community and building your skills as an engineer. We're here in the George R. Brown uh, Convention Center coming to you from Houston. We just set up some banners we had created to showcase our learning journey this year. As we're coming in from overseas, we had ordered a lot of things for our hotel to build a separate pit. And sure, our tent may be missing a roof, thanks Amazon, but it actually made our pit a lot brighter compared to what other teams had, so we rolled with it. Also, the new roof didn't arrive until after the competition, so we didn't really have much of a choice anyways. In the evening, we reconnected with an old team from Lithuania, Litvok. During our regional qualifying meet, we invited them to our school for the week to see how we did robotics, and we ended up winning the tournament together other's partners. And it was a great time to be able to reconnect and a reminder for our students that robotics doesn't just solve problems and also is helping build bridges between people. The few days of rest to shake off the jet lag 
competition of day one was intense. This day is the judging day, and it's all about showing off what you've learned. Teams get five minutes to share their learning, and then they get grilled for 10 minutes with a question about the robot and their learning. It's even harder at World Championships because you've got another team standing right beside you with a sheer curtain separating you and the other team who's talking about their journey. Man, talk about distracting. After judging, a robot gets inspected to ensure we're field legal, won't tear up the field. And thankfully, we mostly smooth the cast. We only have one official match day out of 10 matches total over three days, so scouting becomes our secret weapon. Our team heads off and starts interviewing and scoping out other teams in the division. This year, there are 256 com teams competing, and we were competing against 64 other teams in the Franklin division. While some of our members are out scouting, the drive team is on the practice field testing our robot. And this is really where our problems begin to start. Before this competition, we'd made our robot out of acetyl or delrin, a special kind of plastic. Last minute, we decided to change our side plates out for aluminum, and while it may look a lot cooler, it may have been a bad idea. Yes, it made our robot much more rigid and much more solid, but this extra rigidity ended up causing our robot to break in unexpected ways. So during our practice matches, something broke every single test. A claw, an arm, a joint, whatever. We were fixing something every time. But this is the engineering cycle in practice. You'd find a problem and make a solution and move on. But then a new problem would arise. And by the time of the first match, we'd put on our last replacement arm, hoping that this would hold for the match for the tournament. Held our breaths while we were watching from the stands, only for our robot to fail at that joint. And naturally, we lost the first match. But thankfully, the story doesn't end there. One of the core tenets of FTC is gracious professionalism. When our robot faltered, the spirit of gracious professionalism shone brightly in the community. Competitors turned allies stepped in to help, proving that this community were all in it together. To fix this arm, we had to redesign it, but we didn't have a 3D printer to make a new part. But with over 200 teams there, we reached out on Discord, and over 20 teams said that they'd be happy to print off our part for us. And this was our competition helping us. And honestly, as a teacher, it's really inspiring to see these groups of students come together. And it was a moment that made me feel really proud to be part of this community. So we sent this part off to one of those teams to help print it off and hope that we'd be able to find them tomorrow to get it installed quickly. So while our first match threw us a curveball with a broken arm and a lost match. Perhaps not the day that we were hoping for, but maybe the day that we were expecting. Rather than letting us get this down, it really just fired up our determination. The next day has always been better. We learn, adapt, and get ready for the next round of engineering tomorrow. But little did we know that there were a lot more bumps coming down the line on day two. T-minus three, two, one, go! Go!